Good morning and welcome to our daily reflections on this Monday morning. Today's reading from the Gospel of Matthew gives a different eye view from the story for, that is found in Luke about the birth of Jesus and how it all began. So the reading is from Matthew chapter 1 starting at verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until he gave, she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. And this is the word of the Lord. You have to feel sorry for Joseph. Mary was given notice of the overwhelming event that was going to happen to her. Joseph just gets the bald facts that his fiance is pregnant. It must have been devastating to G Joseph in the community that this is set. Not like those these days when it seems babies arrive whenever they arrive. In those days, this was a serious business involving disgrace and gossip, loss of reputation for both mother and father. But good on Joseph. He seriously thinks about what to do and doesn't do the knee-jerk reaction most people would of shouting from the rooftops that it wasn't his fault and that Mary was totally to blame. And because of his good heart and his belief and faith in God, Joseph was open to the presence of an angel who could explain the situation and help him come to terms with it. Even when he woke up and considered his dream, he didn't just dismiss it as a figment of his imagination. He took on board everything that the angel had spoken about in the name of God. How many of us would accept a dream of that magnitude without doubt and a shake of the head? But what is not mentioned in the gospel narrative is what happened each day from then on. The snide remarks from the neighbours, the nudging of each other and scornful looks from the gossiping women, the avoidance by the respectable people who forgot that there but for the grace of God go I. Joseph and Mary must have been quite isolated with only their shared experience of actually being given a message from God through the angels. And although it isn't mentioned in Matthew's version of events, when Mary went to visit Elizabeth in the hill country, halfway through her pregnancy, and Joseph was left behind to work in his carpenter's shop, would the gossips have had a field day suggesting that she had left him? 
All this reinforces to my mind that essential need to avoid being judgmental and constantly comparing people to my stunts. We seldom actually know the full story of other people's problems. We rarely find out the essential truth behind the scenes. So to make a judgment is not only unkind, unloving, but also rather silly, stupid almost. Our best bet is to lovingly support the people that we meet, making allowances for mistakes, giving them the benefit of the doubt, unless overwhelming evidence to the contrary, when, even then, we should continue to love them, just as Jesus loves them, totally, eternally. Joseph was essential to the gospel story, even though he hardly gets a look in when the nativity stories are related. He is in the one that gives Mary the physical protection, the respectability of marriage and the support for her, especially while Jesus is small. He is the breadwinner. He guides and protects Jesus as a child, teaching him not only his trade, but also the law of God, the rules of his faith. It is Jesus that took, it is Joseph that took Jesus by the hand each Saturday morning to the synagogue. It is Joseph that taught Jesus all he needed to know for his bar mitzvah. And Jesus loved Joseph, not just for all that he had done for Jesus and Mary, but simply because he loved him. I hope you have a safe and happy week. May God bless you and all your loved ones. So let's finish off by saying together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.